you guys, this is Tim Trich from Cord Cutting University with a quick video here on how to use a Wi-Fi analyzer in your house to help you troubleshoot any buffering you may be getting. So I know what you're thinking, Wi-Fi analyzer, you gotta be some technical genius to know all this stuff, you gotta be a, a, a techie guy. And in a lot of cases, if you're trying to get some really intricate details, I would say yes, the answer is right, you are correct. Um, you, these things can get really granular in the information you give you. But they're also a very practical tool for someone who's not a techie person, and I'm gonna show you how to use it in your home and hopefully shed a little light onto what could be possibly going on in your house that could be causing some buffering. Because what I've learned when I've helped people is um, anytime they get buffering they, or they move to streaming and, and they have problems with, with it, they automatically think, I need to call the internet company and buy more speed. Uh, it's buffering because I'm out of speed. I wasn't streaming yesterday, I'm streaming today, and I need more speed. Now, in some cases, that may be true. If you have 10 meg of internet in your house, streaming is going to suffer with that. But if you're someone who has, you know, 50 meg, you know, 100 meg, whatever you're paying for from your internet company, speed is rarely the issue. Rarely, rarely the issue. Most of the time, it's caused by interference. So interference is caused from basically operate other devices and, and things in your home operating on the same frequency um, as your Wi-Fi network. So my recommendation since the beginning of time is if you're going to do any kind of streaming, you need to have a dual band router to do this. Now, what is a dual band? Why do I care, Tim? So good question. I'm glad you asked. So what we're going to do, what, when you look at a dual band router, they operate on both. They broadcast two wireless networks in your house. Okay, the mesh ones only operate broadcast one, but they also are capable of both. So not to confuse you, but I really prefer a router that does broadcast two separate networks, a five gigahertz one and a 2.4. Okay, in the old days, the old routers only were 2.4. And so what would happen is, is and it, was, it seemed to be fine. Nobody was streaming. Nobody had their cell phones connected to it. We only had like three devices, you know, a couple laptops, a computer, and that was it. So what would happen is, is it was fine. There was just, it was, it was, there was plenty of room to move around. There wasn't a lot of interference. But as technology has grown and evolved, we have doorbell uh, cameras. We have smart thermostats. We all have cell phones. We have Xboxes. We have, you know, Bluetooth on our phones. We have all sorts of things that operate on that same frequency and it causes interference. And so the wireless people are like, man, this is getting crowded over here. We need to create another frequency for Wi-Fi to use so we can kind of you know, spread the wealth. And the way I always analyze it or, why, or way I always look at it is, think of it as lanes on a highway, right? So 2.4 is like a three-lane highway. And a three-lane highway, you put 100 cars in there trying to, get in the, trying to go someplace at the same time, right? It doesn't matter how fast your car is or how if there's no speed limit on the highway, you can only go as fast as the car in front of you, okay? You just, there's just, you can't magic your way to another place. Well, networking is the same way. They're just, it's just traffic going down a highway and it can only go as fast as the stuff in front of it. So if it's convoluted and crowded, you're going to get things like interference. Interference is literally being stopped at rush hour, coming to a dead stop at rush hour because you can't go any further. That's exactly what buffering is. It's literally the, your streaming can't go any further. So it stops and it just starts spinning. But rarely is it stopping because it's out of speed. It's stopping because there's other factors interfering. So what the guys, the smart, smart people of the world, they created this, or they, uh, you know, isolated this other band use called, uh, that's five gigahertz. And five gigahertz, in my analogy, is like opening a 25 lane highway right next to it. Okay, so you, have, you still have your three lane highway. You still have the 2.4 network in your home. Okay, but then you also have this 25 lane highway right next to it. And what the 25 lane highway does is allow you to take your fast cars, your, your fire sticks, your Rokus, your smart TVs, your Xboxes, and put them over on a faster highway, more isolated and spread out from everyone else, kind of gives you your own lane to operate in, and you can get from A to B much faster. So there, but there's some trade-offs, okay? So the, the, the 2.4, the three-lane highway, has basically a max speed of 55 miles an hour, okay? But it goes farther in your home. The signal is much, much stronger. It's a low frequency sine wave. And so the sine wave can actually go through walls and go through ceilings and go through exterior walls. So you can pick it up out in your yard. I mean, it's a much stronger signal. 
So people confuse that. They're like, oh, well, I have a super strong signal on 2.4. I'm going to connect to it, and they get buffering because, because everybody's, your neighbors, yours, you know, most people have about six neighbors that live around them. Because everybody is broadcasting this really strong signal, it gets really crowded, right? So out in your yard, you're also picking up your neighbors and your other neighbors and the guy behind you. You're picking up all these other networks. And so, yes, the signal's strong, but it's very crowded there, okay? It's, dodge, it's rush hour uh, on a three-lane highway, all right? So what we want to do is we want to focus on putting our streaming devices, what you're getting buffering on. We want them connected to a separate network that's a 5 gigahertz network, and we want to make sure that they're, they have good, strong signal. You want good signal, and you want to make sure there's not a lot of chaos going on. And I'm going to show you this tool. It'll show you literally how to see that, okay? So when you first open it up, it's going to kind of give you a list. This is literally all the other Wi-Fi networks it sees. It sees these are all Wi-Fi networks of my neighbors, people around me, all sorts of things. I mean, you can see there's a lot, right? So this is all interference on my highway right now. This is interference on my highways. These are other cars that are just have all day to get somewhere and they're just blah, da, 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 da down the road and I'm trying to get somewhere and I'm in a hurry and they're in my way, right? That's what these are. So um, this app, when it, it'll help you with some of these to help kind of figure out where you need to put your cars so you can get from A to B much quicker. So hopefully that makes sense. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on channels down here. Okay, that's right here at the bottom. I'm going to click on channels and this is kind of giving me a bird's eye view of signal strength and what else is going on and you know are all these cars in my lane and just all this stuff so we're going to start over on 2.4 i'm just going to click right here to get to 2.4 now you can see and as as i hold this more stuff will come in you'll see it pop in but you can see and and my network here is netgear right here this is this is me this is also me this other netgear that's also green but the one we're going to focus on is this one right right up top Okay, so Netgear, but look at all look at all this stuff in here. So here's a lane on the highway, here's a lane on the highway, here's a lane on the highway. You can just see all these cars in my way getting from where I need to go. Okay, just a, it's just a mess. Now if I click on 5 gigahertz, you can, and, and this box right here is a little slider box. Let me click it. Okay, it's that gray box there. You can put your finger on that and slide it back and forth. So... There's a block of networks, nothing, 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 nothing. Okay, and then this is where I'm at, right? So here is my, here is my five gigahertz network. Um, I'm standing right next to my router, so it should be really good. And you can see there's a big gap between it and its buddies. And he's in this lane, and they're in this lane, right? So pretty much when I'm in the basement of my house, I have my own lane, and I got plenty of signal strength, um, power uh, above anybody else. I'm not getting, in this scenario right here, I am not getting much interference. This is, this is what you want to see. You want to see high signal strength and not a lot of stuff down here, okay? That's what we're looking for. So my advice to you, one of the things you can do with this app is just go to your TVs, wherever you have a TV, and just stand there. Let it kind of, let the app learn what's around it and just pull up this graph look right here and just see what your scenario looks like, okay? If it looks like this, you might have a problem. If it looks like what we have here, potentially you'll be much, much better, okay? So that's kind of what we're looking for. And I'm gonna show you a really cool thing you can do to help do this and, and test your signal as you walk around your house, which is really good. Signal is a big part of this, okay? You want to be the brightest star in the room. You want to be. You want to shine brighter than everyone else. Now, with the numbers here, you can see basically the way it goes is the lower the number, the better the signal. So if I click on my uh, list here again, okay, down here at the bottom, you can see these signal strengths, right? You can see them in here. And some of these are grayed out because they're, you know, not too, not interfering too bad, but they, the device still sees it, okay? So now let's click on, all right, so I want to test Netgear 5G. So the first thing I want to do is connect to it on my network, okay? That's the first thing I need to do. I need to connect my cell phone to that network, make sure I'm connected to that Wi-Fi. And you'll see that you're linked to it. You'll see it's linked, okay? 
So then I'm going to click on it. I'm going to actually click on it. It's going to open up this, this deal here. All right. So I'm connected to Netgear 5G and I have a minus 26. Remember, the lower the number, the better. So minus 20, I mean, you're, anything up to like minus 60, you're good. So minus 20 is awesome, but I can literally touch my router. So it's, I'm really close to it. Then I'm going to hit the start button. And then I'm just going to start walking around my house. Okay. So I'm going to walk away from my router now and you'll see the signal go down. So I have a TV in my basement um, across the way. So I'm going to go stand over by it. I mean, it's, it's an open basement, so it's only about 20 feet away. And you can see just by walking over there, my signal dropped from minus 20 to minus 40. Still plenty strong signal, right? Really good signal. That's what we want. So what I'm, now that I'm by this TV, I'm going to hit my minus button. I'm going to hit my back button again. I'm going to go over to my channels. And I want to look to see, you know, how's my, how's my gap doing, right? So it's gone down a little bit, but I don't expect to have any issue. This is still plenty big gap. It's when it starts flirting into where the, where the names are getting meshed together that we could have problems, okay? So nothing to worry about here. All right, so I'll go click back on it, hit start again, and now I'm going to walk upstairs. All right, so now we're going to be getting really far away from the router. Um, and so my router is in my basement. I don't remember if I told you, but I have two floors. So we have a, a main floor and then an upstairs. So I'll go in both of them and kind of talk you through this and just see. So I'm going to go to my living room TV next. Okay, and the living room TV is still doing really good. So I'm just going to stand here for a second, let it level out. Okay. So minus 50. I mean, if you can get minus 50 in your house, you're doing awesome. All right, so I'm just going to kind of walk around. I don't have any other TVs on the main level, but let's just say I threw one in the guest bedroom. So we'll go back here to the guest bedroom, kind of walk back there and just see what the signal does back here. I mean, it's just a really nice indicator as you walk through your home what kind of signal you have. Okay, so it even got better back here. I, if nothing else, I would say that we'd be, the TV back here should work better than the one in my living room. Okay. Okay. Now, this isn't an end-all be-all, right? This isn't gonna be the, um, uh, well, I had strong signal, I shouldn't be getting any buffering. This is just a tool to kind of give you an idea, okay? So it's just, you just wanna, it, you just wanna see what your, what your Wi-Fi is competing with, right? So let's just, I wanna make sure, anytime I go in and I use a tool like this on a customer's house, you know, I, uh, there's a, still a little bit of guessing involved. Right. There's still a lot. Well, I mean, it, you're pretty close here. It could be signal. We could add a booster. I mean, it's but it'll at least give you a better idea. And it's definitely better than calling the Internet company and asking for more juice and having to pay for it. So now I'm going upstairs. As you can tell I'm a little out of breath as I'm talking and doing this. So I'm still connected to my router in my basement, two floors down. I mean, that's this router that I use is a really, really great router. Um, it's a great device. So this is my first daughter's room. No TV in here, nor will there be, but um, good signal, minus 50, not even, minus 50 is awesome. Okay, walk into my other daughter's room here. All right. Again, same deal, minus 50s. Now I'm going to walk into my son's room. He's usually the one that gets the notorious, the worst signal. Okay, which is no big deal because he's also not getting a TV. Okay, so this is kind of that area where um, you probably want to do something or potentially want to do something. I'm going to click out of this for a second, and I'm going to hit back again and let it find everything, go to my channel list, and you can see right where I'm standing right now that... These other networks are also in, they're in my house. Like I said, my house is a little different. That's not my neighbor's Wi-Fi. That's other Wi-Fi I have in my house while I'm testing this. But you can see that Netgear 5G is fighting this stuff right now. It's below, it's below it. So if, if my son did have a TV in his room, I would honestly fully expect him to have some problems. And, and this is just due to the fact that my router's in my basement. It's going up two floors. I already told you five gigahertz doesn't travel as well in a house. I would say that the signal on five gigahertz is like shooting a flashlight into a forest. Okay. You shoot it into the forest. You can see the first tree, second tree, third tree, plain as day, right? Just they light them up. 
and then they very quickly start to get darker and darker and darker until you can't even tell you're looking at a tree anymore, right? So 5G just doesn't do well as it's bouncing around my house and trying to get all the way upstairs. It just dissipates and dissipates and dissipates, and it just can't keep that signal that strong. So it's one of those things. Now let's quickly just look over here at 2.4. Oh my goodness, look at that. So if you didn't have a dual band network in your house, you didn't have a dual band router, this is what you're looking at. And this is where I was talking about, like, there's just a little bit of a common sense thing involved. You, uh, again, all I'm, this is all the stuff that my router would be competing with or my, my Roku to try and stream. This is all cars on the road, all this stuff. It just gets really, really busy. So that's where that 5 gigahertz is really important, right? So this is another device I have. And as you can see, it just the signal gets a little weaker. So I'd be looking at doing something. I, you know, if I wanted to give my son a TV, I probably have to look at beefing up the signal a little bit up here. Okay, so let's go back into our analyzer here. I'll finish my, my walkthrough. I'll kind of walk by my back bedroom. My wife's sleeping, so I'm gonna be quiet. But. So you can see ours gets great signal. It's just that one area in the front of the house, right? Just doesn't do the greatest. Now, okay, so you've decided that there's an area you need to beef up the signal. What should you buy? Maybe that's your question. I hate extenders. I hate them. They do not do a good job. They cut your speed so bad, it's, it's just, it is, they're unusable. They actually create interference in your home network. They don't help it, they hurt it. And without getting all the details, just know I hate extenders, okay? They're just, they're not good tools. But one tool that I really like that I've been testing, and I think it does a fantastic job, and when I connect my phone to it directly and go up to my son's room, I'm in that 50s and 40s range again, is um, this guy right here. So don't get me wrong, Netgear makes a ton of crappy extenders, just like the Dex uh, equipment company, but this guy right here is a really great device. This is the Netgear AC2200 X4S, as in Sam, mesh extender it's about 170 bucks or 150 bucks somewhere in there and through handling technology a little differently it is able to take use your same wi-fi name so most extenders have like you know your wi-fi with a dash ext at the end so you got your normal wi-fi then you got your extender wi-fi and it's a mess this actually uses the same names as your current wi-fi downstairs and it rebroadcasts the signal. But it does it in a way that doesn't sacrifice any speed. And if I was connected to it right now, which I'm not, but if I was connected to it right now, I could go up in my son's room where we were just getting a uh, great signal, or not very good signal, and the signal will be much stronger, and I could run a speed test, and I'd be getting every bit of the speed I was getting downstairs. It just really is a great device. So if you're looking for a way to extend your network in your house, maybe your router's in your basement or stuck in a corner office or something like that, and you're just not getting good signal, I would look to one of these guys. I really like them. The good news is they don't have to work with just Netgear stuff. They'll work with any dual band router you have. As long as your router is a dual band, they will work with it. And so even if it's the one from your cable company, they'll, they'll work with it. So great tool. The way I look at it is, you know, yes, it's a little more expensive than a traditional extender. And yes, extenders can work. They can put a, it's like putting a bandaid on a flesh wound or putting a bandaid on an artery wound, if you ask me. But, um, you know, they can solve a little bit of the problem, but they just, they're just a nightmare to troubleshoot. This guy, on the other hand, that I've been playing with has done a really, really great job. Uh, hasn't sacrificed any of the speed and really makes it super easy to deal with. And so... Uh, uh, really great tool. And I, my recommendation is spend the money, right? So, um, you know, this is your entertainment. This is your, this is your, how you're watching TV now, right? Streaming, streaming is the way we do things. Spend the money in a good piece of equipment that's going to be able to do it. Because the other, the other thing that makes this thing really nice is, um, is it can handle a lot of devices, right? So there's kind of two areas that routers are weak in. One, some of them do a really great job in speed, but they can only handle, you know, 10, 11 devices at a time before they start 
degrading that service. This guy can handle in the upwards of 30 or 40. So it really is a great device. It's pow it'd be a powerful addition to your house and I highly recommend it. Um, they do have a, a model up, which is really hard to say because it's the Netgear, um, Netgear Nighthawk X6S, <laughs> X6S, super hard to say, but there's the X4S and the X6S. Um, model so it's a little more expensive a little more powerful if you want to spend the money on that um, but all it needs is an outlet so you can move this around your house i just plugged into an outlet in my house and you can just move it around to where it gets the best signal and is doing the most good right a little bit of trial and error but it really does well and the app's easy, it makes it easy to set up so anyway i just wanted to kind of share that a little bit with you hopefully that tool will really help you wi-fi man's a great app um, it does a great job and it just will give you a little insight as to what your current Wi-Fi is fighting to try and keep you guys entertained on your TV. So uh, that's all. Thank you for tuning in. And I hope, uh, hope you guys have a, a great rest of your day. Thanks.